draft board up. So, I'll go first, representing the Orlando Magic, a perennial lottery team. You know, it's it's a lot of smoke, I think, on, on the whole Jabari Smith thing. I don't see the Magic passing up on, on Chad Holmgren. You know, potential generational athlete, all-around game, a defensive force. You know, offensively, you know, he, 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 he's moving like a guard out there. The size is certainly an issue. You know, Knicks fans co- coming from the Porzingis days, the size definitely concerns me. The frame definitely concerns me. But, I mean, the, the tools that the kid brings, the Magic need everything and the kitchen sink right now. You, you take this guy as, as your franchise big for years to come. So I'm going with Chet Holmgren with the Orlando Magic. That, you know, I was kind of hoping you were going to go with consensus there because now OKC, it puts me in a bind. I'm going to take Paolo Boncaro mm. for OKC. I'm going to take Paolo Boncaro. I like that. A guy, a guy I've seen, I, I saw live multiple times this year. A guy who 6'10", 250, can play with the ball in his hands, make plays for others. Um, has all of the tools that you want. He could probably play in a playoff game today. Uh, the talent is overwhelming. I do have my question. You know, I seeing him live. I, how much is, is there a little Ben Simmons in him from the perspective of like, does he want to get better? Like Jabari Smith might want to get better. I do have those questions. Is he going to be a killer every minute he's on the court? But man. That package, that size, with those tools, that's hard to pass up. So I'm- wow, yeah. I thought I was going to be taking Paolo for sure. I'm taking Jabari, obviously, here, who's the nice. most talented guy left. Uh, and I don't think I, I haven't seen him much linked with Houston here, but if if he's the guy left, Houston is definitely taking him. Uh, he's First of all, Christian Wood, I think, is on his way out of there. He slides right into the, the Christian Wood spot. I think you got to take best player available if you're Houston, but he can just do so many things. Like he he pulls up for three, he can handle the ball, he can lead the fast break, he can play defense, he can, you know, everybody talks about big men switchability. He can switch on the perimeter. He can do pretty much everything that you you need a guy to do. He doesn't have a lot of weaknesses right now. And if you're Houston and you need everything, you just you're in a position where you got to take the best talent available. And with, you know, whether you like Holmgren or uh, Paolo more or not, uh, J- at this point, Jabari is going to be the best guy there. And you go with Jabari. <laughs> See, this is the question, right? This is the Sacramento Kings. We know that they have De'Aaron Fox on a long-term deal. They got Davion Mitchell last season. They just traded Tyrese Halliburton. Do you want to go in the ne- in that same direction of taking the best player available, which the Kings have been known to do? But then it just kind of mucks up everything over in Sacramento. So I'm kind of feeling that I feel like you, we've heard the rumors that they w- would want to trade out of this pick, that there's some of them trying to see what the value is. But for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to throw you guys off a little bit. I'm going to go shade and sharp oh. and, and, and go go with uh, go with the wing combo for the Sacramento Kings. They need some depth over there. Sure. Uh, you got Harris and Barnes, but I think they need to go a little bit younger and Get a little bit more athletic. Mm. Take a guy who can score. So, Kings taking shade and sharp and shocking the entire NBA world. Wow. I think Sacramento would regret big time if they passed on Jaden Ivey. And if I'm Detroit, I'm rushing yeah. to the podium to yep. take him. I, I think that would be a huge mistake by Sacramento to pass yeah. on Ivey. And that's not as because well, I'm down on sharp. I just think Ivey's going to be better. He's going to be amazing. So since Shadon Sharp is off the board, obviously for Detroit Pistons, I'm, I'm going with Jaden Ivey. You know, the, the, dyna- the dynamics that he brings, the athleticism, the electricity, capable three-level score, quick first step, elite first step. You know, a- absolutely elite first step. Yeah, he needs to work on his defense. And, you know, people want to do the job comparisons. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go that far, but still a really, really excellent player. And a, and a kid that could be a star. Uh, for the Indiana Pacers, I'm going with uh, Keegan Murray, mm. who is a guy that I, you know, I think is he's, in my opinion, the guy that could shake up that top four, if, if any. Uh, that that's you know what I've heard is that he's maybe the guy that could slot in there. Uh, six six eight seven plus wingspan, two twenty, versatile, can play with the ball in his hands, knocks down threes, defends, can protect the rim. He's the modern NBA. 
this is what every team is looking for. This is the type of player that you could say, can he play in a playoff series down the line? Is he going to get played off the floor? This is what it looks like. You know? All right, Chip, on the clock, the number seven pick with the Blazers. We're hearing rumors that they're looking to trade yeah. that pick. They want to build around Dame. They're trying to win now with Dame. Do they use the number seven pick? Is this going somewhere else? What do you think, man? Where are you, where are you going with yeah, this pick? This is kind of like Alex with the Kings. I, I think this may be the most likely pick to get traded. Yeah, mm-hmm. so this is kind of a hard one to pick, but this and this may be a reach, but mm-hmm. I went with Jeremy Sohan here mm. because, and, and I know I haven't seen him go this high in a lot of mocks, mm-hmm. but their defense is always so bad. They were dead last this year. I think they were 29th last year and 28th yeah. the year before. I, I know their offense wasn't great this year, but I think they need to prioritize defense. And he is one of, if not the best defensive prospects in this draft he can guard all five positions you know he's a guy who has a lot of upside on the offensive end i think too if that obviously the first thing you read about him if the jump shot ever comes around he's one of those guys Mm -hmm. but he can really he can handle the ball well high motor guy i just think if you're portland whether you're building around dame or you're building for the future it doesn't really matter you need to prioritize defense um al where, where are you going uh with the eighth pick and the pelicans an interesting selection for the Pelicans. You know, I, you know, they got Kyra Lewis down there. Mm-hmm. Is it Graham that they have down there as well? Yep, Devontae Graham's there. Yep. Yeah. yeah, they got Devontae Graham as well. So they got point guards down there. They got, um, they got Jose down there as well. You know, they're solid at the center position with uh, Val- with Valanchunas. At this point, it and you know you got Zion, so you got your your Ingram. four. You can play five. Yeah, you got Ingram down there too. At this point, if CJ. anything, I feel like this. See, they got everybody. They yeah. got everybody. They got. They got. got depth. I think if anything, yeah, they got depth. I think we'll go Benedict Matherin for mm, okay. uh, for the Pelicans. I feel like the upside is there. The athleticism is there. You know, he can knock down the three. Uh, get some. You could potentially get some solid defense out of him. I feel like that's the pick that the Pelicans are going to go in that direction. Just add to their wing yeah. depth. And, you know, with the Spurs up next, I, I think speaking of shooting, I think the Spurs are another team in, in need of shooting. You know, they, they have some nice pieces, a nice young core. Um, obviously, the, the point guard is dynamic with Murray. You know, they had another young point guard, another young guard in, in, in Primo. They have uh, Devin Vassell, who they drafted in the uh, in the top and draft a couple years ago. Keldon Johnson. But I think they could use some more punch on the offensive side. And so I'm going with A.J. Griffin here. 48% from three. Obviously, the defense is going to be questionable for Pop. Um, you know, the injury, the durability, yeah, that, that'll go in question as well. But I think he'd be a nice fit for this Spurs system. I think he'd be nice playing off of Murray. The Washington Wizards select. All right, so I'm, you know, th- this is a, a somewhat easy pick for me. Hmm. I'm looking, I'm looking at their lineup. First, I'm looking, I'm looking at Chris Stapps. I'm looking at Rui Hachimura. I'm looking at Denny Avdia, Tomas Sadoransky, Raul Nato. These guys like they like their international flavor. Hmm. And then I'm looking at Tomas Sadoransky, looking at Ish Smith, Cassius Winston, Raul Nato, and I'm looking at a, a point guard crop that. I'm not very confident in. So I'm going to hit best of both worlds. I'm taking the Aussie, Dyson Daniels. There we go. To the Washington okay. Wizards. Fits in next to Bradley Beal. Yeah. Big wing. Can guard the guys that he's not going to be guarding. Can play off him with the ball in his hands, without the ball in his hands. Fits in. You got a big jumbo lineup with daniels and denny and and uh kuzma and you know all these wings you get, it's, he's modern he fits and i think he's the best value here at the same time so i'm i'm taking dyson daniels from the g league ignite the- i don't think i don't think it makes sense to even put the poll up because johnny davis is going to be the winner <laughs> so <laughs> so let, let's go ahead al i'll start with you man the thoughts of uh a johnny davis to the knicks pickup I'd be stoked if the Knicks got John Davis. That's my guy. I know you sent out a tweet and a poll on IG uh, asking him between the four of Dyson Daniels, Benedict Matherin, AJ Griffin, and Davis. I had Davis. I had Davis third because I think the other guys just size-wise uh, playing off ball would be great next to RJ. But getting Johnny Davis, look, 
watching him play at Wisconsin, man, kid took the entire offensive load as a dog on defense. What I like about him is like what people rave about Deuce McBride. He played football in high school, played quarterback out, out in Wisconsin, uh, played uh, QB. And he's just tough, dude. I and mean, you see that foot, like, I like that he played two sports. I don't know how many sports he's played in total, but that football mentality of just being physical and being aggressive, I think that's going to tr- help him translate to the NBA. Yeah, I agree with everything you just said. When when you did the, the Instagram post, I had him second, but I only had Griffin first because I was just hoping he'd be there. I don't think he'll still be there, but I, I love Davis. And the mid-range thing that you said, Alex, I think you nailed it there. We need a guy who can create his own shot pull up in the mid range, someone who can make things easier for RJ. So he doesn't need to be the, the only guy who can make it simple. Obviously when Randall does it, it's, it's a lot more difficult sometimes. And it just to someone to make the game easier and Johnny Davis can make the game easier on guys. And he doesn't always need the ball too. I feel like the size that he has, the defense, the hustle. Obviously, I think he, he'd fit right in here with Tibbs. You want a guy with a, with, a, with a good mental makeup, and from what you read by all accounts, he certainly has that. So uh, I think this would be a, definitely a safe pick for us. Obviously, you want to see the three-point shot improve a little bit there. You know, you already have Archie. You already have Julius here who, you know, aren't the greatest three-point shooters in this lineup. So you want to see some more balance there, and hopefully he can bring that. Uh, but again, being able to play off of these guys, I think, will take some pressure off of him as well. Uh, we'll, we'll see how he handles, you know, getting separation or what type of, you know, off-ball movement that Tibbs, quote-unquote, offense you know, we'll prioritize for, but uh, I like this pickup for us. Hey, Johnny Davis makes it to the Knicks. I'll get, put it, put it, stamp it. I'll, I'll get a, a Knicks Johnny Davis jersey that, that <laughs> night. <laughs> he's, right. he's got the, he's got the New York mentality, man. Big time player, 37 on Jaden Ivey's head. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, two way guy, two yeah. dog plays both, both sides mm-hmm. of the floor. Uh, better passer than giving credit for in that Purdue game you know, understands, all right, I got it going. All the attention is on me. Now I'm getting my teammates involved, made this like left-handed live dribble hit to the, to the weak side corner coming off a ball screen uh, that his teammate didn't knock down. But like just that kid, the, the load he had, how locked in. I mean, I, I think New York, the garden, like that kid's made for it. Uh, Chip, you're up next 12 with the OKC thunder. Where, where are you going there? Well, I'm, I'm taking Usman Jang. Mm. Yeah. And for the same reason, the guy who just called in said that for the same reason, the guy who just called in said the Knicks should Makes take sense. him yeah. because Sam Presti just took, just took Paolo. Who's going to help them win a game every once in a while. And he doesn't want to take anybody else who's going to help them win. Right. So he wants to take Jang and send him down to the G league and let him develop every once in a while. Maybe play every maybe play a game every, so every, uh, every once in a while. But, yeah, uh, he's looking for a, a draft and stash guy or a guy he can put in the G League for a year. And I'm going with Mark Williams for the Charlotte Hornets. Mm. I think they got everything else that you need on that team. I think they finally need to invest in the center. For him, he's going to give you that off-ball defense. He's an interior scorer. Gives you some solid offensive rebounding. Just a solid overall rebounder just in general. I mean, they've had Mason Plumlee down there. I think he's fine and serviceable but i think they really need to invest in getting someone who's a true center and he's also good on the defensive side like he's also a true shot blocker so if you're going to have someone you know essentially what we're looking out of mitch for the new york knicks i think that is what you can get out of mark williams and potentially even more you know and with the last pick in the lottery the cleveland cavaliers i think they go jaden harden here jaden hardy I think they go J- Jaden hardy go get a take a swing on a, on a wing bucket getter at a g league ignite 36.6 uh shot 36.6 on his catch and shoot threes from the g league obviously his three point numbers need to improve a little bit only shot about 26 percent from three so that wasn't all that great but um i, I think they take a swing here you go to Jaden hardy see if you pair him up with um with with garland in the backcourt and see if you can get that that team a little bit more explosive there all right and so that is the lottery exercise i thought that was a good one i, th- I think we made some some pretty realistic picks we'll see what happens on june 23rd but uh johnny davis is the unanimous selection for the new york knicks at number 11 let's see uh let, let's see if that's where he lands i think the spurs could be a tricky one there jay boogie did call that one 
on last week's show. I think the Spurs could be a team to watch for Johnny Davis, uh, you know, even even the Pelicans as well. But let's see. See if the Knicks can uh, get lucky there and, and grab that guy, Johnny Davis, with the number 11 pick. 